What's up, Harry? What's, uh, what's going on? How much? How are you? What was that? I was trying to sit on the armrest, but I missed. Yeah. Fell. Hashtag, you failed. True. What are you up to? I am making a TBH video. A, a what? What is, a what is TBH video. To be honest What's video. What's a to be honest video? Well, it's where you just take some time and you, you tell someone their your honest feelings about them. Oh, that and sounds kind of fun. So today, today I thought we could make a TBH video for Alicia Hunter. Oh, okay. But let me try first. Okay, you go ahead. To be honest, Alicia, um, your last name is Hunter. Ooh, good one. Thanks. High five. Um, do you think that since her last name is Hunter that she, like, hunts, like, that would make sense, Wild because why else would she have the last name of Hunter? Right, it's not like she married into it or anything, no, so it only makes happen. sense that, that it's about her profession. But if she's, she's a hunter, why doesn't she wear more camo and, like, bright orange then? I don't, I don't know, but but she does have a large tree in her office. That is true. So do you think that when she works, she works in a tree stand? Maybe. Because Hunter? Yeah, because hunters work in tree stands. I get it when they're, right, right. When they're hunting. Connect all the dots. Yeah. <clears throat> have you ever, maybe, uh, have you ever seen what happens when Alicia listens to techno music? To be honest, I have. It's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Alicia Techno Hunter. guys how are you I'm good well as Cletus and Harry said my name is Alicia Hunter what they did say may or may not have been accurate you guys can decide or try to figure out that later I do work at the church here as the cross current assistant with Derek so I get to spend a lot of time with the middle school students and the high school students I am also the connection coordinator so I spend a lot of time with our small groups and our volunteers and I gotta tell you, to be honest, I have the best job in the world. I'm pretty stinking blessed to have the family that I do here. There's people in our church that are like family to my husband and I, and, and we're pretty blessed to have that opportunity. Have you guys ever introduced yourself to someone and said, and they responded to you and said, so are you the, the daughter of so-and-so? Are you the son of so-and-so? Anybody said that? Anybody respond to that? There's kind of that connection, right? There's that, that sense of association. You could say that you are with them, right? But here's the question that I want you to think about today. Are you with God? Like, would there be that same sense of connection, that same sense of identification between who you are and who God is? Over and over in the Bible, we see that God was with people. He was with David when he fought against a Goliath, right? He was with Noah in the flood. He was with the Israelites when they were in the desert. And we know that he is with us. But there's a difference in God being with us and us being with him. And that's what I want you guys to think about today. Are you with him? Are you willing to claim that? That connection, are you willing to claim that as part of your identity, as part of your image of who you are? Are you with God? In order for us to feel like we are closer to God, we have to choose to be with him. It's a choice that we make. It's something that's active. It's not something that just happens by, by chance. But how do we do that? How do we be with God? He's with us here already, so it would be kind of easy for us to just cross it off and say, I'm done, I've, I've, I've done my part, right? But there's more to it than that. In a relationship, we have to spend time with, you, with each other. We have to have that, that sense of communication, of knowing what's going on in the other person's life. So you guys ready for this? The first thing that we have to do to connect with God, to be with God, is to talk to Him. When we make that choice to be with Him, then those struggles and those perspectives and those difficulties in our life, they start to kind of change. They start to kind of go from me-centered 
to God-centered, to others-centered, those, those difficulties don't pull us down quite so much because we can see a little more of God's perspective in life. How many of you guys send a text every single day? Most of you. How many of you send a text, maybe like five texts a day? How many do you think you send, how many of you think you send maybe like 10 to 20 texts per day? Still quite a few. How many of you send 20 to 30 texts per day? How many of you send 30 to 50 texts per day? You guys text a lot. I didn't even go past that on my notes. How many of you send 50 to 75 texts per day? Are you guys being serious? How many of you send more than 100 texts per day? Wow. I didn't think it was going to go that high. I don't even want to keep going because I don't want to know. So when you guys talk to God, do you talk to him like a friend? Or does it end up being something more where it's just a checklist, where it's just a, this is the rote prayer that I'm supposed to say, so I'm going to say it and I'm going to check it off. Do you have that ongoing conversation with God? If you guys are sending 100 texts a day, that's, I send a lot of texts for work, but I don't send 100 texts per day. I'm pretty sure I'd go over our texting plan if that was the case. I want you to think about when you're going on a trip, you're spending the whole day with this person from early in the morning to late at night. Are you going to talk to him just that first maybe half hour when you get in the car and then at the very end of the day? Or do you talk to him throughout the whole day? The whole day, right? There's that ongoing conversation. In 1 Thessalonians, it says that we are to rejoice always, to pray continually, to give thanks in all circumstances. Conversational prayer is kind of like texting. It doesn't have to be some long, drawn-out process, but it's staying connected to that relationship. Think about some of the text messages that you guys send, and and maybe you guys send other text messages that I don't, because I don't think I could hit 100 of them, but what's for dinner? Where are you? I'm bored. Let's go get a snowball, right? They're short. They're concise. But you know exactly what's being communicated, right? I want to do a little pop quiz. I want to see how many text abbreviations you guys know. What's LOL stand for? Good job. What's TTYL stand for? Good job. You guys are awesome. BTW. You guys are rocking this. AIA. Anybody know? Alicia is awesome. Yup. Woo! You guys didn't know that one? Josh says it to me all the time. So now I want you to think about some of the text messages that you might send Jesus. What are some of those things that you would send? If it, not necessarily in a text, but what are some of those things that you would communicate to Jesus? I love you. How am I going to relate to this person? How am I going to answer this question? I'm stressed, God. Help me. I'm sorry for doing this. Those same phrases, those same types of communication that we have with our friends, with our family, we can have that same kind of communication with God. Conversational prayer is like texting and that it is frequent, it is short, it is persistent. We're not just saying, okay, God, I I think you might be able to handle this. We're saying, no, God, I know it. I know that you're on my side. I know that you can do this for me. And it's not about what our plans are because our plans are oftentimes way different than God's plans. But there's still that level of faith, that level of trust that he's got it under control. So how can we have that prayerful attitude at all times? We have to realize and accept that we're not strong enough. That's a hard one for me to grasp. I want to be strong enough. I want to be able to conquer it. I want to be able to do it on my own. I'm stubborn. I'm glad that Josh didn't just say amen because I was kind of worried about that. It's, it's so easy for me to get wrapped up in, I'm going to do this myself. But to have that prayerful attitude 
We've got to say, I'm not, I'm not strong enough. I'm not going to be able to do this on my own. It means realizing that God cares for us and, and he's there to protect us. So what kind, of key, what kind of things keep us from praying more? Maybe, maybe some of you have thought that you're not really sure how to pray. Or maybe you get bored or you get distracted and you're like, okay, God, I'm going to pray. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to knock this quiet time out. And then pretty soon you're asleep. Or some of you may think that your requests are too small. Well, other people have bigger problems in their life, so God's not going to listen to me. Or some of you may question whether our prayers do make a difference. So let me try to sum up all of those deep theological questions in one little phrase. Prayer is communicating with God. Silent survey. Everybody close your eyes. No peeking. Raise your hand if you have ever told yourself, I don't know how to pray. Okay, you guys can open your eyes. Don't put your hands down and open your eyes. There's a lot of us that have, that have allowed that lie to penetrate what our thoughts are and to say, we're not, we're not good enough. Our requests aren't big enough. That's not the truth. We don't need to be intimidated by fear. Do you know what intimidated means? It means to add fear into our life. God doesn't usually operate around fear. What do we do when we become afraid? We start focusing on that, right? And we get consumed with that thought. And pretty soon it's pulling us down and it's distracting us and it's getting us away from where we're supposed to be, right? And it's taking all of our energy and moving it over here when we're supposed to be right here. Ever been there? Ever been there? I have. I was here. I was there last week. One of the easiest ways to refocus our thoughts and to get back to where we're supposed to be is to pray, to allow God's love to quiet our fears and to give us the confidence that we need. It would be easy for me to stand up here and say all these things and act like I've got it all together. I would actually rather it be that way. But I have to be honest with you, I struggle with these same things sometimes, guys. I was sitting in my office last week and I was talking to Pastor Kyle and I was so consumed. I was, I was over here. I was consumed in those fears. I was consumed in those frustrations. And they were taking all of my energy and they were taking all of my focus and pulling them down over here. And I'm talking to Pastor Kyle and I'm just like all worked up. And he's sitting there just so calmly. He's like, Alicia, you just have to pray. You have to trust God. You have to just let it go. And I am so worked up and so frustrated that I look at him and I slam my fist down and I'm like, it's not that easy. <laughs> he just calmly sits there and waits for me to like, I was so impatient and so sassy and so frustrated. I'm like, it's not that easy. The concepts of Christianity are easier than the application, right? I understand that to say, all we have to do is pray to refocus our thoughts. And that sounds pretty easy. And in, in the concept part, in the, the head knowledge part, it is pretty easy. But I realize that there are times when in a day we're going to have to re-surrender things 50 times over and over. We surrender it, we let it go, and then pretty soon it's right back here. But that's where we've got to realize God's perspective and not our own and not give up. Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Think about the word cast. Does it mean to kind of gently roll something? Does it mean to kind of just set it about two inches away where you can go pick it back up? No, it's talking about to throw it as hard and as fast and as far away as you can, right? It's talking about using all of your strength to get it as far away as possible. To throw it out, to reject it, to banish it. When you think about David and Goliath, did David go up to Goliath and say, Okay, Goliath. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, here you go. No, he didn't do the 
that at all, right? He took that stone and he threw it as hard as he possibly could, right? That's what we're supposed to do. That's what that verse is talking about. Casting our fears and our frustrations as far away as possible. We shouldn't just surrender to those difficult situations and say, okay, I prayed about it once. We're going to have to re-surrender those things. It's a process. Pastor Brant has told me that over and over. It's a process, Alicia. Forgiveness is a process. Growing in your faith is a process. It takes time. It takes going back through those things and those lessons that we've already learned. But here's what we've got to remember. We don't have to know the future to have faith in God. We have to have faith in God to be secure about the future. How cool is that? We have to have faith in God to be secure about the future. It's so easy for us to get wrapped up in the what ifs, in the what are, what's going to happen. I know especially when you're going through high school, you're, you've got all those questions of what am I going to be when I grow up? But if you're focused on God and you're focused on the right path, it'll make a huge difference than if you're focused on yourself. Living that elevated life makes all the difference in the world. Letting God have our anxieties calls for action not passivity. It's not just a matter of setting those things down on the side and saying, okay, here it is right now. You gotta have, you gotta do it with everything that you've got. We have to trust that God is in control and that he knows best. One of the biggest lessons that God has been teaching me over the past few months is trusting in him and abiding in him and relying on him and knowing that he's got it under control even when I don't understand it. Even when it doesn't make sense to me, even when it's frustrating, even when it hurts, he has got it under control. So let me ask you a question. Are you going to be closer to the people that you are real with or closer to the people that you have that kind of shallow relationship? You know what I'm talking about by shallow relationship? Have you ever gone through church and people are like, oh, hey, how are you? Good morning. And you're like, I'm awesome. Good morning. And you don't know a single thing that's going on in their life, right? And I'm not saying it's just a church. It happens everywhere. But then there are those people where we, we go to them and we, we pour our hearts out to them. We say, man, I'm hurting. Man, I, I'm frustrated about this, right? Which one are you going to be closer to? The people that you're real with or the people that you're shallow with? The real, with, the real ones, right? It's the same thing with God. If we're being shallow with God and if we're just saying, hey, God, I'm good. Thanks for the food tonight. Amen. We're not having that gut level honesty with them, right? We're not saying, God, if you guys read the Psalms, there's so many things in there where David is pouring his heart out and he's saying, God, I need this. God, I'm frustrated about this. God, I'm angry at this person. He was real with him. We've got to have that same kind of realness with God. Philippians 4, 6. It says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace is different from world, the world's peace. We won't find true peace in the positive thinking, in the, oh, just be happy and it'll be all right. It comes from knowing that God's in control. It comes from knowing that he's got it all figured out even when we don't. True peace doesn't mean that there won't be struggles, that there won't be difficulties. Sometimes those struggles and those difficulties are just opportunities. I want you guys to watch this video clip real quick and see how those opportunities have, have changed this person's life. What do you do with that? Sounds like an opportunity. Let me ask you something. If someone prays with patience, you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they prayed for courage, does God give them courage? Or does he give them opportunities to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does it give them opportunities to love each other? What do you do with that? Sounds like an opportunity. Let me ask you something. If someone prays for patience... Those opportunities 
sometimes seem more difficult than just ignoring the problem, right? Sometimes we're looking at those relationships and we're saying, you know what, it'd be easier just to set that aside and not allow my faith to grow, not allow that relationship to be built up. That's not what God calls us to do. That's not what we're supposed to do as elevated people. God can work through those problems, those, those difficult situations, and put healing in our life. And God can use those to better us and to better the people that are around us. The peace of God is unwavering confidence, trusting that God is able and trusting that he is willing to do what is best for us. We can't see everything, but we know somebody who can. We can't see how what we say to somebody today is going to affect them five years down the road. But God sees that. That last part of the verse, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We don't have to understand it all. Because he's got it figured out. We just have to trust in him. That next verse after that talks about what we need to think about. How many of you guys have heard of the whatever verse? Do you know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The whatever verse, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure. You guys know what I'm talking about? Pastor Derek and I were emailing each other last week, two weeks ago, about a couple different shirt designs for youth conference. And he was out of town, and so we were emailing these different ideas back and forth. And at the end of his email, I had sent him a list of all the different possibility, possible quotes that we could put on the shirts. And at the end of it, he had said, with whatever shirt we do, let's put on the cross current logo or the, the C2 fish with whatever shirt, with whatever quote. So in my mind, I'm thinking of this verse in Philippians, the whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is right, think on these things. So I send him back this email with these different shirt designs with whatever on it. And he doesn't reply to me and I'm like, okay, whatever. He does, he didn't, I didn't mean to say that, whatever. That probably wasn't the best word choice there. He, he didn't reply to my email. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, maybe we'll talk about it when he gets back. He gets back in the office a couple days later and he's like, okay, I really don't understand why you have whatever on all these shirts. We can't sell a shirt that says whatever on it. That's not gonna work. I said, well, I thought that's what you were talking about. And so we realized this big difference, and I've got it in my office. One of the other staff members created a shirt with the Philippians verse on it that says whatever is true, whatever is noble. We don't have shirts in the merchandise area that have whatever on them. But it was a pretty funny little mix-up there when we were emailing each other back and forth. But it's a, it's a, it's a funny reminder to me now to have my focus in the right area, to have my focus on whatever is right whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure. And that thought process, when we're, when we're watching our thoughts, when we're, when we're guarding our thoughts, it's going to be a whole lot easier to maintain that prayerful lifestyle, maintain that focus on God. So who remembers what the first point to be with God is? Anybody? To talk to him. Good job. The next thing to be with God, we need to listen to him. Anybody have trouble listening? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was kind of afraid that somebody was going to be like, squirrel, and like get all distracted and not be paying any attention. Here's the difference between listening and hearing. Hearing is being aware of sound. We know that somebody's talking, we know that something's going on, but we're not really paying much attention to it, right? Listening is active. Listening is being present in the moment. And although this next movie clip might be a slight exaggeration, it does kind of show the way that some people listen to God. Okay, God. You want me to talk to you? Talk back. Tell me what's going on. What should I do? Give me a signal. I need your guidance, Lord. Please send me a sign. What's this joker doing now? Okay. All right. I'll try it your way. All right. Lord, I need a miracle. I'm desperate. I need your help, Lord. 
please reach into my life? Uh, what the? Now I want you to think about your own life. Are you aware of God in your own life, in your everyday, going to school, going to work, hanging out with your friends? Are you aware of what he's trying to say to you? Are you aware of where he's at in your life? Are you taking time to hear what's being said to you? I want you to get real with me for a minute. I'm going to share some stuff from my life, but I want you to be real with me. Do you spend more time talking to your friends or do you spend more time listening? Do you spend more time talking to your friends or listening? Which one do you think is more valuable? Listening. It's hard to do though, isn't it? Because we have all this excitement built up and we want to go just tell everybody about what's going on in our life. Which do you think God desires? Do you think, do you think God wants us to talk to him? Yeah? Do you think God wants us to listen? Yeah? Check out what the Israelites were told to do as they were looking forward to the promise that God was giving them. It says in Deuteronomy 30, 20, Love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice. Hold fast to him. Moses challenged Israel to choose life and listen. God doesn't force his plan on us. He doesn't say, here you go, take it. This is your life. We've got the choice to make on if we're going to follow what his plan is or not. And of course, we have to listen but how do we know that he's talking to us? How do we know what's right? First of all, God speaks to us through his word, the Bible. Have you ever gone into your quiet time and just said, God, show me something today. Use this time to make an impact on my heart. Or do you go into your quiet time with just this kind of, I'm going to do it, I'm going to cross it off my list, I'm going to get it done. If we go into our quiet time not expecting to get much out of it, there's a pretty good chance that we aren't going to get much out of it. If we go into it with expectancy and saying, this is going to be, this is going to be an impact on my life, this is going to be something, there's going to be a verse in here that I can hold on to for the rest of the day. It's going to make a really big difference. Here's what we have to remember. The best and most reliable way to hear God's voice is to read his word. It's printed. It's set. It's not changing. It's the most reliable and best way to hear his word. The Bible is real. The people in it are real. The stories in it are real. We're not just reading some fairy tale novel of something that may or may not have happened. It's real. And the impact that it can have on our hearts, guess what? It's real. God is going to use those words. If you go into your quiet time and you're saying, God, show me something. Give me something to hold on to today. Give me something to work on today. God's going to use that. God's going to use that to impact your life. And very likely the people that are around you in your life. And when we live our lives based on truth, there's a lot less doubt. There's a lot less fear. There's a lot less frustrations. And I'm not saying that it's all going to be easy. 
because it's not, because I can go right back to that time when I'm talking to Pastor Kyle saying, it's not that easy. But it makes it a little bit different. It makes it a little bit easier because our focus is on him, not ourselves. It gives us the confidence when we're living our lives in truth to know that God is on our side, to know that we're doing what's right. So God speaks to us through his word. He also speaks to us through other people. Proverbs 15, 22. Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. Sometimes God gives us wisdom through a friend. Sometimes it's through a parent, a youth leader. There's lots of different people that can speak truth into our lives. Other times, God speaks to us through a song. Not quite like Bumblebee did on the Transformers movies, but, but fairly close. Last night, we sang the song Never Once. Two weeks ago in church, we sang that song. And that week, I was struggling. I was hurting. I was so focused on my parents' divorce and the, the hurt that it caused in my own heart that I didn't, I didn't feel safe. And I didn't feel like I was going to go through life with people that knew me. I didn't feel like I was going to go through life with people that cared about me. And I was listening to those lies. And we got to that part, that song in the service. And the song, part of the lyrics say, Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I stood right about there in between my husband and one of our best friends, and tears were streaming down my face. I couldn't even sing. I just stared at those words on that screen because I was so much in shock and so much comforted. I was like, wow. God is faithful. Never once did he leave us on our own. Never once did we have to go through this life not knowing if we were going to have to do it on our own. Before we move on to the next point, I want to clarify one thing. We need to be careful who we're listening to. We all need those people in our life that are going to speak truth into our hearts, that are going to say, no, you, you can't be going on this direction. This is, this is where you need to go. And if we're just going to the people that we think are going to give us the answers we want, then that's not going to be the truth. That may get us a little bit, a little distance, but in the end, it's not going to have the substance to hold up. Have you guys ever seen whipped cream, like the spray stuff? If you leave it out, if you spray it all out, you know, at first it's all built up and you can make a pretty tall little pyramid with it. But if you leave it out for a couple hours, you know what it looks like? A runny sticky, disgusting, like, just blob of white goo. That's kind of like what going to somebody who's just given us the answers that we want is going to be like. It doesn't have the substance to hold itself up. It doesn't have the consistency to give us the strength to make it through that struggle. And all we're going to do is end up in that sticky mess. So God speaks to us through prayer. He speaks to us through other people. He speaks to us through reading the Bible. And he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And I know right now some of you are thinking, oh no, that's kind of creepy, and I don't know how that works, and I don't know that I want to know. God can speak to you through the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christian, he's spiritually connected to you. The Holy Spirit can make us kind of uncomfortable sometimes if we don't understand it but it's not really that hard. Jesus promised that even though he would not be with us physically, that we would not be alone. In John chapter 14, it says, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father. And he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. God has given us an advocate, which is just a fancy word for the Holy Spirit. He is God within us. 
the Holy Spirit's job is to guide us, to comfort us, to help us go through life, to live life together. The next verse in that says, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives within you. He lives with you and will be in you. Did you catch those? He will be with you and in you. And here's my favorite part of that verse. It's right at the end. Verse 27. Oh, it's verse 18, actually. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. This verse spoke so much to me. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You're not going to go through this life alone. God is faithful. This quote reminded me, this verse reminded me of a quote that was written on the walls of a concentration camp. These, these concentration camps were horrible places. And this one person wrote on the wall, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I'm alone. I believe in God even when he is silent. It's kind of hard sometimes when we're going through life and we're, we're feeling those what ifs, right? Why did this happen, God? Why did this happen? What about that? I believe in God even when he's silent. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He's there for us. He cares about us. I can't imagine being in a concentration camp. I can't imagine the things that they dealt with throughout the day. But to know that they had the faith to say, even though I'm going through this, I believe in God. I believe in him even when he is silent. Even in the difficult times. The Holy Spirit guides us into truth. We can't trust that he will give us the information that we need in the right time because we know that he's with us and we know that he's going to give us that information. We have to remember though that his timing is oftentimes different than our timing. I hate that part. I want it to be my time. I want to be able to just pray and say, okay God, give me the information. Give it to me now. That's not how it works. His timing is often far different from ours. God will not leave us. He is in us. God knows what will happen. And because he is with us through it all, we don't have to fear. We just have to trust in him and be with him. John 14, 27, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You're going through life with that confidence. You're going through life with that focus on him. I love what this is saying. It's saying that we don't have to worry we don't have to be concerned about what's going to happen to us because we know that he is with us and that he's going to go through that struggle right beside us. Have you guys ever been around somebody that you were really close to when they were hurting? Have you ever had somebody in your life, they were, they were really hurting and they were going through something really difficult and you were right there beside them? Do you feel that pain in your heart too? Do you feel a little bit of what they feel? prayer is somewhat like that. Whether we are writing in a prayer journal or just praying in our minds, there's a connection between us and God. Let me tell you the most simple thing that you can do if you think that you've never heard God's voice. Get out a blank sheet of paper and say, God, give me the name of somebody that you want me to pray for. And then be silent be still and pretty soon somebody's name is going to pop up in your, in your heart somebody that maybe is a friend or a family member that's hurting or maybe it's somebody that you don't even know what's going on in their life and if you want to take it a step further text that person just say hey I'm thinking about you today I'm praying about you you will be surprised how many times they will text you back and say wow I didn't I don't know how you knew that I was going through something rough that day. 
But that text message, that little tiny text message made all the difference in the world to me. We have to be quiet to hear, right? There's a lot of noise in our lives, a lot going on between texting and the internet and our friends and the TV and all these different things grabbing our attention. We have to be quiet. We have to be able to set that stuff aside and say, God, this time is yours. This time is the time that I give to you. This time is where I'm going to be focused on you. And then to stay in that throughout the day and to be focused on him throughout the day, that constant conversation, that constant communication. So to be with God, what's the first one? What's the first one that we have to do? To be with God, we have to talk to him. What's the second one? Listen to him. Third one, finally to be with God, we need to receive from him with joy. How does a little kid receive a gift? They get all excited, right? They start jumping up and down. We've got a little three-year-old, and he gets so excited on Christmas. He's just like, I want to open it, I want to open it, I want to open it, give it to me now! And we give it to him, and he's tearing into it, and he's getting all excited. He's just like bubbling. And then he opens it, and it can be like the most simple gift. It could be like a balloon. And he's like, oh, thank you, I love it! Right? He's all excited about it. And then we get to the teenage years, and we're opening that gift. And we're like, oh, this is really cool. This is awesome. But, oh, wait, i got to maintain my composure. I can't be letting my parents think I'm actually excited about this. So I'm just going to go like, thanks, Mom. And then we get to be adults, and it's even worse. Because then we're like, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, I, I can't take this from you. Sorry, sorry. It's too much money. I can't believe you spent that much. How? No, 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 no. We're doing God a disfavor when we're pushing those gifts back in his face. When we're saying, oh, no, 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 I, I can't take this. I, it's too much. It's too much. Don't, don't, don't buy that for me. We're stealing that blessing from God when we do that. I want you guys to check out this, this next video clip and see how she receives a gift. Okay, look, he bought you this. Jewelry? Seriously? Sheldon, you are the most shallow, self-centered person I have ever met. Do you really think that another transparently manipulated... Oh, it's a tiara! A tiara! I have a tiara! Put it on me, 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 put it on me. You look beautiful. Of course I do! I'm a princess and this is my tiara! You're right, TR was too much. <laughs> Do you accept God's gifts with that much excitement? Or are you saying, no, 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 it's too much. It's too much. God has things that he wants to give us. Give us. He gives strength to the weak. He gives courage to those who are scared. He gives rest to the weary. He gives hope to the hopeless, and he gives comfort to those who are hurting. So what do you need more of right now? Are you trusting that God's going to provide for your needs? Are you trusting that he's got it under control, that he's got it figured out? Are you listening to him? Are you with him? There's a big difference in intellectually believing that God is with you and really learning to do life together and really learning that awareness, that ongoing awareness of his presence in our life, that text message kind of relationship with God. To be with God, we need to talk to him continually. We need to listen to him in the quiet and we need to receive from him with joy. Let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for the students in this room and I thank you for the leaders that are willing to take time out of their life to spend time with us and spend time with with the students in their church. And God, I just ask that you give each of us the strength and the words and the wisdom and the courage to live an elevated life, to be focused on you and to, to just live our life fully 